Artificial Research Institute, Mandaba. Dr. A. Saravanan is currently working as Senior Scientist in Marine Biodiversity and Environment Management Division at ICRCMFRI, Mandaba. He is serving as a scientist in ICRCMFRI from 2009 to till date. He completed his UG, PG, and PhD from Fisheries College and Research Institute, Tutukuri. He has been working in various fisheries sectors, including fisheries biology, taxonomy, fish processing, extension, teaching, and research. Since 1999, he is currently leading a nationwide project on jellyfishes since 2017. He has published 26 research papers, 25 technical articles, 10 book chapters, 2 reports, and 2 books. He backed IFAF Award at 11th Indian Fisheries and Aquaculture Forum held at Kochi in 2017. He also backed the Best Success Story Award for Green Ramisaru Project at the National Conference of Marine Degrees held at Kochi in 2018. I would like to invite Dr. R. Saravanan, Senior Scientist, Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, Mandagam, to deliver a lecture on Taxonomy of Hitherto Neglected Marine Taxa. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon to you all. Can you all hear me? Sir, you are audible, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to present uh, some of my works in the title uh, Taxonomy of Neglected uh, Taxa. And last year also, uh, the Fisheries College and Research Institute organized uh, uh, to commemorate uh, this day and I am happy to participate and present some of my works which would help uh, students to uh, formulate their research in interest in future. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Taxonomy of hitherto neglected marine taxa. As you know, the marine realm contains nearly 33 animal phyla. That is what known to date, the number of phyla. All the representative of these uh, phyla are found in the marine ecosystem. So the job of uh, studying these species in the marine environment is very gigantic. So hence the taxonomy is a very big area. And so because of the quantum of the species, many groups are neglected or omitted or not getting enough attention of the researchers because of the paucity of funding. Altogether, taxonomy is not much funded, but there are many other species which doesn't require much uh, economic advantage, so they are not given much importance. So I would like to bring your attention to these neglected marine taxa through this. As you know, so without uh, going to the basics, I will not be able to proceed further. So taxonomy is very critical for biologists. And uh, however, very few appreciate this. to appreciate the works of taxonomists so that we understand the nature of their work, how they contribute uh, in the uh, development of science. Uh, article in Current Science, uh, this is very aptly discussed, that sentence on time in India. So you may uh, read more about this, how in India, of taxonomy. This taxonomy appreciation day thank all the hardworking taxonomists around the world. It is celebrated 19th March. So they are the people who study the species which have evolved over 4 million years on earth. So though the recent technique just before me, Adrivil uh, Pandian has elaborated the DNA technology, how this has accelerated. Nevertheless, 
the basics of uh, taxonomy still remains the same it supports the modern technologies also however the biodiversity in the marine environment has been less understood because of the three dimensional uh, view or expanse of it and it is very difficult to penetrate into the uh, different uh, depths of ocean so surveying is difficult so already there are knowledge gaps in the study of species and the penetration of this environment is again at a task that's why we don't understand much marine biodiversity in the ocean environment so there are number of species concept more than 20 species concepts are there and you must know and you be reading only about that one particular concept but similar to that there are nearly more than 20 species concepts are there and with which taxonomists classify do systematics and uh, collect all their specimens and uh, hold in the museums so museum collections are very vital uh, for taxonomy as well as for taxonomists and uh, just i would like to compare that. when i was called for this presentation I prepared this the top uh, first slide so there you can see in 2022 the worms database you may know all the register of marine species consists of 240271 species whereas in 2023 this month it has increased to 200 and, sorry 242000 so 2000 species have increased in the database so that is the dynamic nature of biodiversity so we uh species very little on this earth so on increasing and the worm database is a, a proof for that and if you look at the fish base which host all the fish species of the uh, freshwater and so as marine you can see in two database so that is the nature of uh, uh, that yeah. missed, including dr kalvel pandian who have con contributed a species uh, of uh, icri and uh, similarly many people in the world increase this number so that we come to know the diversity of this earth and i would like to talk about uh, some of the phyla in the marine ecosystem where i am have been working for the past uh, decade and uh, around uh, 32 phyla 32 to 33 depending on the classification that differs and uh, the phylum echinodermata is one of the important uh, marine invertebrate it consists of five classes holothroidea echinoidea holothroidea consists of uh, Sea cucumber, Echinoidea consists of sea urchins, Sophiraidea, Bertus star, Astraidea, Palmer stars, and Craneidea, Feather stars. These are the five classes. I will introduce you. These are some of the starfish varieties which you can commonly find in Gulf of Manar area. So here, this uh, red color one, the starfish, and here you see the multitude of color, and here you see a uh, pincushion starfish. And here, forearm. You must understand that all the starfishes will not have only five arms. There are starfishes with the three arms, five arms, up to the maximum of 36 arms. Sunflower starfish can have 36 arms. So, arms will be varying with the different uh, genus. So, this is one of the important group, benthic uh, uh, carnivore, and it is one of the important keystone species in the marine much has to be studied because the soft parts are only two feeds so if at all any molecular or morphological technique has to be developed and it has to be done so far very little work has been done in our ecosystem even as a whole in india we do not have a, an atlas of soft fishes of india something like that so i have done uh, some work on uh, this species in gulf of Manar, and uh, that i have 
cataract. Here, what you see is uh, sand stars. And here, these are two sand star species. How taxonomy is very important, how people are specializing in their work, the unique capacity one should have to involve in taxonomy is that. So look at this, both for and for these species would look uh, same. But if you look very closely, the spinal structure, how it is sharp, how it is blended, these two differentiate these two genus. Both are sand star, Astropactan genus and Arcaster genus. So both are, uh, for a novice eye, would look similar. But if you look at the, this is the particular taxonomic character when you want to study the sand star. So something like this, every group will have a unique taxonomic technique uh, to identify them. So that uh, set of skills you need if you want to specialize in a particular taxa like this, a smaller, minor uh, taxa where more people are not there. So you must develop interest to study them and uh, observe these things. So then only here you see how these uh, spines are there in the marginal spines. Here you see there is no marginal. These are some of the key characteristics to differentiate this group. And to look at this inside. So this is the oral side of the starfish. The top side is a oral side. The oral side is this. The starfishes have a unique feeding in nature. They will ex exit their stomach outside and put it on the prey and then just dissolve, digest the prey and absorb all the digestion of their nutrition. So you must know about that the oral and the oral side of that. This is the oral side of the starfish. So the glossary, technical terminology for each group is very different. If you know crustacea, you will not be able to study echinoderms. So echinoderms require a separate set of uh, glossary uh, ma master. So then only you will be able to concentrate on them. And here, if at all you have collected, I will give you some of the simple techniques how I am using and uh, if at all you want to study how you will have to go. Here, if you have collected starfishes, they are calcareous. You cannot uh, directly put it in uh, formally. It will become brittle. It will break away. So you have to kill them with 8% magnesium chloride so that they are, uh, what to say, anesthetized and this will, first this will anesthetize and then it will kill. So you have to keep it uh, in this medium for six hours and then you can put it in spirit. So afterwards only you can uh, keep it in formalin only for little hours. So you cannot store or for that case any echinoderm in formally you have to use only ethanol sprint for long term storage here you see only just recently this I have seen this particular surface this can have up to 9 arms so this here it has some 7 arms Lydia maculata so this I have so far many occasions I have seen only in the dead conditions in there tall discards. Recently only I could collect a live one that I am maintaining in our aquarium. And if you look at that Ludia maculata, you must understand that the genus name come from a scientist who worked somewhere in 1660 to 1769, Edward Louis. So from this person only the name has come for this genus. So like that you have to appreciate the works of uh, taxonomists and uh, for, you know, many other taxonomists appreciate other taxonomists so they name like this. So they give name to a particular species in honor of a scientist who worked uh, in taxonomy in 1660. So even after some 400 years, so we are continuously this and we are remembering. So this is a statue found in England of this taxonomist, Lydia Maculata. From his name only, the species name has come. Echinoidea is another class in echinoderms. There are sea urchins. Sea urchins are of a major two groups, regular and irregular. So here the coin like things. These are also urchins. They are irregular urchins. If you see sea urchin, here is the test. You have to call, there are specific terminology for this. 
the calcareous uh, part of that body is called test here it is a star face you can see the pentaradial symmetry though their shapes are very different but they have five part symmetry in their body so here you see various sea urchins this is also a sea urchin 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 so look at that they look in various different shapes but still they have pentaradial symmetry this is lovinia elongata here the live animal with all those spines and here bleached test this calcareous part why we have to bleach means the taxonomy characters are these patterns and these holes so in order to study you have to bleach the chn test to find out the taxonomic characters here this is an irregular chn here it is bleached here this is also an irregular chn this is a regular chn so these are some of the chn species which i have worked and here there are taxonomic characters the top side is a oral side and here there are parts is apical disc and the petals like leaf and the bottom side you have very stone and uh, this is food groove okay so here the through this food enters and it excreted so here you see in the heart urchin this is called heart urchin this is called the sand dollar heart urchin how it is there very propped this is uh, through this food enters through this uh, waste comes out okay these are some of the specific if you want to study sea urchins there are specific terminologies to study them if you want to study starfish there are specific terms must master to study them so likewise only you have to develop interest so that different species are getting importance so generally students and others feel that commercially important criteria species only people like to study but you should develop interest because otherwise these species would never get attention what they want because ecologically they are keystone species very important in ecosystem functions they are doing so here i have partly bleached the sea urchin test to show this is a test of a stocom registrus variolaris chn and this ambulacrum and interambulacrum these are all areas this is called the whole patterned area is a ambulacral zone and this in between area is interambulacral zone the pore pairs and tube tube feeds all these are all the taxonomic character even the aristotle landed if you cut open the ca archin you will have five uh, teeth so each teeth will have different morphology based on that you can group them into different uh, families and here you see here the parts of this tooth so all this you have to master uh, to identify them into genus level and species level in ch the anus is on the top there will be pores and to remove that waste the mouth is at the bottom so oral side is at the bottom top side is the anus so here another ch in temnoplurus stomaticus i have shown here the different parts of the test again shown in this photo so here there are very many species associated with ch genes here you see for a novice eye you will not be able to differentiate suddenly here you see there is a zebrida adamsi symbiotic crab this is obligate symbiont that means this will live only in association with this urchin only so taxophnistus pileolus this is a venomous urchin which i am keeping on hand but this can give very painful sting okay so don't hold our handle in their hand and this are change sorry this symbiotic crab associate only with this so when i was studying this here change i came to know about this and i published so likewise these groups smaller groups symbiotic crab zebrida so you will be able to study only when you have keen interest to observe this minor taxa otherwise they will never come to the A light of signs. Here, this is a sea urchin. 
the test is calcareous but it is flexible so the fire retin astrophagia radiata which i am holding it is flattened it is not bulged like this but it is flattened but the text is flexible in nature so it 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 it, it won't break it will not break so we as per my studies here in gulf of munna i have documented around 16 species of redwood chn in gulf of munna area so when i come to another class holothraidia you know sea cucumbers are in the very important ecosystem uh, cleaners and if you want to do taxonomy you must be ready to do field works and you will have to master the photographic techniques and that so you should have all these talents so photography also how to take macro photography and how to do the aperture size and shutter speed and for ISO, what ISO to be fixed. All these things you should know and you should know how to make multiple images and then merge it. Okay, And uh, that is called photo stacking technique. Sometimes in microscopy, you will be able to see one particular area very bright and clear. If you change the focus, it will move, the adjacent area will be shown. Okay, so you have to know the technique like photo stacking to get the entire image clear. So these are some of the photographic techniques also you must uh, master if you want to study taxonomy better. Here you see uh, mostly commercially important seeking was only mostly studied, but here during our regular survey we have studied a uh, very uh, small warm sea cucumber it will be for a novice it will be looking like a warm but they are commonly called warm sea cucumber synoptula media from the nascody waters in park the inshore sea area so you can see the oral tentacles that is an important only in a relaxed condition sea cucumbers will put out their oral tentacles so this is a warm sea cucumber synoptula media which we have so very small in size, you very, uh, very for a novice, you will not be able to see, or sometimes you will not be able to realize that as a sea cucumber. So, that is a species, a minor sphere group that is found in Park Bay. And again, one another seaweed, which is called Acetabularia, and uh, nearly only six centimeter in size. So, we when we are doing a survey in Park Bay, we have collected. This Acetabularia is uh, very unique because this is a unicellular green algae. The entire plant is only single cell with 6 cm in height. So that is the uniqueness. So maybe in, even in Japan, considering that uniqueness, they have released the stamps for that. This is what appreciation. So work is appreciated as well as a species uniqueness is appreciated through postal stamps. So such uh, advanced and understanding should come through our work and uh, through this kind of uh, online webinars. So we must understand and appreciate the unique uh, uniqueness of this species also. This species is found as Citabularia, uh, green algae is found, but the entire plant is a single cell. That, that is uniqueness. So we must uh, appreciate uh, that particular uh, uniqueness of this species. And here, during our survey in Lakshadweep, so we found this common cell, sea cucumber common cell, the gastrolepida clavigera. Again, this is a scale worm associated with sea cucumber. So only with sea cucumber that is associated. So very unique, obligate. So when anything happens to the host, this will also perish. So such a unique connection is there. So very small in size, this I have again published in our um, uh, magazine. So, Gastrolepida clavigera scale worm is an obligatory common cell of C. cucumber. So, field work is very much essential. You must know to build a team uh, who are very curious uh, to know the species because any collection trip requires the help of each and every person who is involved without which so you must be very curious in the field you should not be much hesitant so whatever come you collect and at that particular time of collection even if you are not able to identify you collect because when you collect so next time when you see the same 
there will be some understanding and then finally you will be able to form knowledge so first you have to gather information of its occurrence slowly you will build upon knowledge okay so sea cucumbers is again very important in gulf of munnar ecosystem and because of this commercial in nature but anyhow from 2001 this has been banned and in lakshadweep only there is a, a mohammed koya sea cucumber sanctuary declared in 2020 for about 239 subscribed ground that is the world's first sea cucumber reserve and mohammed koya sea cucumber uh, reserve in lakshadweep so that is that in this manner these resources are conserved because they are all in schedule uh, list so that should not be uh, damaged or any uh, use or anything should be done and again another group which i am involved is jellyfish that is commonly called the medusae and uh, if you want to know jellyfish there are different jellyfish group cyphosovans cubosovan and hydrosovans cyphosovans are called two jellyfish and uh, bigger in sizes cubosovans and hydrosovans are uh, other groups cubosovan are also a uh, larger one but they are highly venomous groups and uh, hydrosovans are all small planktonic uh, jellyfishes so i am now here focusing on this uh, cyphosovan jellyfishes around 224 valid species we have so far uh, Uh, record 40 percent are isostomes, 34 percent are semostomes, and 26 percent are corono coronates. So you must know what are these names and how they are different. So then only you will be able to understand them. So to start with, what to measure? If you see a jellyfish, the bell diameter similar to fish, how you uh, weigh length and weight. here the length is bell diameter bell diameter is the length and total weight is the weight so you will get length weight uh, parameters similar nature so here also again if you want to study jellyfishes you must again master all this technical terminology here what you call oral aboral umbrella and subumbrella oral arms okay tentacles and these are oral arms and again tentacles and the stinging cell, cells gonads Okay, Ropalium is the eye of these jellyfishes that is found around the bell. So these are all some of the technical terminology you must master. In Cubosova, there are two major group: Charybdidae and Chirodropidae. Only in four corners, if only one tentacles are hanging, they belongs to this order, Charybdidae. And uh, if there are many. tentacles from each four corners they belongs to chirodropidae okay, group so like that you can differentiate in cyphosovans there are many families cyanidae and pelagidae all representative of all these groups are found in indian waters and recently few years before i was called by the state fisheries department for, from dindigal to study a jellyfish found in kodaikanal lake and sample was given it was identified as a lemnoptila indica we should uh, we should not assume that jellyfishes are all restricted only to marine environment but there are freshwater jellyfishes but they are smaller in size and uh, their stings are not highly painful and uh, this particular species of jellyfish was collected from kodaikana lake and again immortality everyone likes isn't it nobody wants to die everyone wants to be living forever but that is normally not happening in vertebrates okay and uh, the genes are not allowing an animal to live forever but whereas this particular jellyfish immortal jellyfish initially i was only studying like you and uh, we have collected the last year this particular uh, group of jellyfish hydrosome jellyfish turitopsis dobrini from andaman coastal waters in gulf of munnar and uh, the immortality comes uh, this jellyfish will grow and reach the adult size and then again this will go back to polyp stage then again this will grow and it will become medusae the adult stage of the jellyfish is called medusae that is what we call jelly and after reaching the adult stage again this will go back to the benthic polyp stage so likewise this can change their uh, 
stage of its life cycle so that means that uh, they are immortal the same animal goes becomes polyp and again it becomes medicine so that is why it is called immortal jellyfish tritopsis this we have collected from underground coast waters and again you may know diatoms in a different two box like thing like ways you have been studying but here what you are looking on the right hand side is a fouling diatom legumophora flabellata this i have collected from gulf of mannar and this is again a fouling only when i was doing this particular identification then i came to know the fouling nature of uh, diatoms so that is very important and uh, it is very new mostly diatom you must have seen in a different uh, shape but here you look at this uh, the lycnophora flabellata again a different diatom these are some of the uh, neglected groups i have been working because uh, i am not targeting but this comes uh, on my way when i am working in the field so that i am paying attention to these also so you cannot restrict uh, look uh, sitting at gulf of mannar doing research you must wide open your uh, eyes uh, to see various species so that you will do some justice towards it again you see that was a diatom again this is a bryozoan for two years i was just uh, collecting from fisherman and they were telling this as a semia pasi it is a pasi it looks like semia so they called the semia pasi that's how when i discussed when i wanted to identify what it exactly is, so many seaweed scientists uh, could not identify it because it was not a seaweed as per that uh, it doesn't look like a seaweed it is something else but uh, i have consulted various uh, eminent people from uh, abroad and then finally this was identified as a bryozoan bryozoans are of two groups calcareous bryozoan and non calcareous bryozoans there are about 6000 species of bryozoans found in the uh, marine and freshwater area and it is one of the important fouling group bryozoans this is uh, collected from park bay and gulf of mannar area in uh, mandapa waters and uh, this bryozoan ametia vetisi data earlier our uh, fisherman considered it as a pasi seaweed but uh, through our studies we came to know and uh, revealed that this is not a pasi seaweed this is an animal bryozoan okay moose animals that is commonly called so Uh, this is an important uh, fouling important means uh, we must understand some of the nuisance creating species so that we manage the nuisance this can grow in abundance and it will increase the drag of the uh, vessels if it uh, grows high so that way this has to be studied and a lot of uh, biomedical application is there there are uh, bioactive substances obtained from bryozo and this particular amatia verticillata is known to have some anti fouling properties so uh, that getting some dividend out of this uh, fouling organisms is very much essential so for that this basic uh, need to study them is also very much uh, required here when i was uh, doing this aquarium maintenance and the kind of health husbandry so a particular uh, poma para poma canvas imperator when it were died out of some uh, health issues we could uh, identify new digenetic trematode that was para discogaster manari so named after gulf of mannar the first time this was described this particular uh, digenetic trematode so here again another group of uh, parasite trematode parasite which was described from gulf of mannar from the species form of and this imperator again a rare portionate crop of pseudoportionella manoliensis this was uh, uh, described by a seafarer scientist collected from manoliensi somewhere uh, in 60s and after that this work in 2018 was the rediscovery after that no work of this particular species so furthering the knowledge of existence of a particular species in an ecosystem is very much essential that is what we are doing by studying this we reinforce reiterate that the species is still available in the ecosystem the pseudoporcinella manoliensis a uh, rare porcelain crab from gulf of mannar so again another weed animal sea anemone you may know here a weed animal ipdasia diaphana so this was a new sense in our aquarium and how to eradicate it and 
two years that we studied and we developed some uh, protocol to eradicate them. This is an important animal in uh, coral reef modeling study. Use this particular sea weed anemone, Iptasia. Anyone who is interested in uh, studying coral reef modeling and that kind of biotech research using this as a model organism, very well can approach me for this Iptasia related details. And here again, Japanese Blenthon Labs, the Palmuster Wagiensis, when we I was working in Karnataka Coast, we observed and uh, brought a first work here in 2014. Afterwards, many researchers have concentrated on this and a lot of uh, works have come. That is what bringing forth to the attention of the researchers so that more research is concentrated. This Lobster Palinistus wagiensis. Now, very good uh, research works are there even from single forest scientists. So, we, this particular preoculate worms, it is commonly called penis worm. This is again a marine creature. When I was doing research collections in Willingham, I collected and uh, I have written in Tamil also, and uh, it is available in my. If you look at my a name in our SEMA for a e-prints collection, these articles are found and you can read all of them. All the SEMA for a articles are posted in our e-prints, SEMA for a e-prints, so all the works can be found there. It is very interesting uh, facts about this pre uh, works. When I was doing a discard analysis, I had to study sea snakes also. Here, uh, the Lapamis cutis, this particular species, what to see and uh, how the scales are there. So like a herpetologist, you may have to study. So here you can see the fangs of it. This is the fang of this. So uh, sea snake fangs you would not have seen. So these are some of the features you must look into that to classify them. So here this is a female Lepermis cutis, uh, sea snake. And again, when you are working in biodiversity, you will be approached with some identification for enforcing wildlife crimes. And this was brought by the Uttar Pradesh Forest Department for identification. These are all gargonids. And in North India, this is sold as Indrajal. And because of some wasp property, something like that, they sell this. And this was confiscated and it was brought an Echnogeorgia species, Heterogeorgia and Hello. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, and uh, polychaete worms again here. This also you must uh, st uh, ready to take it up because this is one of the important group required for shrimp brood stock and uh, reproduction and uh, rearing culture techniques has to be perfected for these polychaete worms. So this was collected from our area, two species. Um, of uh, polychaete worms. And uh, to the end of this presentation, for appreciating taxonomy in India, we have two, not only two, three awards. E.K. Janagiamal National Award for Taxonomy. This E.K. Janagiamal is a plant taxonomist uh, from Kerala. In her name, this is awarded. E.K. Janahi Mall National Award on Plant Taxonomy, Animal Taxonomy, and Microbial Taxonomy. I wish and uh, thank all the participants for your passion and listening. And as well as uh, I, I wish anyone of you in future would receive some uh, of this taxonomy award uh, to 
uh, make uh, this taxonomy a better world to live. Thank you. Thank you very much.